Hello and welcome to Startup Hack. Today we are going to talk about .NET Framework 4.8 to .NET 8 migration. So let's jump right in. Make sure to check out the link down below because we always provide the code samples that you can pull down and follow along so you can see in our project. Alright, before we go into detail, we have to clarify something really important, some terminology because this will be important throughout the whole video. We have to understand what are these three different words. Let's start with official picture from Microsoft. So, .NET Framework 4.8 describes the old .NET that runs only under Windows. I excluded Mono here. It is not cross platform capable. Number two is .NET 6, the modern .NET that is cross-platform capable. It is the successor of .NET Core 3.1 and .NET 5.0. It is the future of .NET and the default for new project. .NET Standard is a specification that describes the API service of a .NET implementation. It is a subset of the .NET Framework and .NET. It is used to create libraries that can be used by both .NET Framework and .NET. It is not a runtime, it is just a specification. The last part sounds odd, but imagine .NET Standard like an interface or multiple thousand interfaces and classes that a client has to implement. The client would be .NET Framework or .NET. Obviously, it is not like that. But from an oversimplified mental model, you can think of it like that. Why is this important? Well, there's a thing called .NET Standard 2.0 and the beauty is the .NET Framework 4.8 and .NET 8 implement that. This means if you have a library that is .NET Standard, you, you can use this library in both .NET Framework 4.8 and .NET 8. And that is the key to migration, at least in this scenario. Microsoft Official supports .NET Standard 2.0, but they will not create new standards. So you should not rely on them anymore and migrate to .NET 8. Do you want to earn $100,000 a year? Do you want to become a software developer within just three months? With our amazing course and awesome tutors, you never have to worry about getting stuck. We help students to learn skills that companies want to hire. We are Startup Hack. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. So let's get started. All right, groundwork. Before we can start the migration itself, we have to do some groundwork. And this is independent for the next step, but big benefit. You gain already some benefit from it. Migrate to the SDK style CSProj format. If you forget how the old CSProj format looks like, here's a reminder. And this example is almost the smallest you can get. Look at the modern SDK style and this is a reasonable big project file. On top in the old world, you also have a packages.config file that contains all the AnyGet package packages. It seems cumbersome you to migrate projects, but it is not really the there are plenty of good tools doing the heavy lifting for you. The main tool I use is the upgrade assistance from Microsoft. This tool can migrate your projects to the new format and also look for and you get packages that are incompatible. Yes, that is something you also have to do sooner or later. Migrate your and you get packages for the sole migration of the project format. It is not necessary, but for the migration process as a whole, it is. Basically, I went through all projects and checked whether or not the AnyGet package is compatible with the .NET Standard 2.0. If so, you don't have to do anything. Again, we want to do this step by step. You can move to a new major version or replace it after your migration is done. It is really important to stay on track. For packages that are not compatible, you have to find a replacement. And this is the tricky part. There are plenty of packages that are not compatible with the .NET Standard 2.0. Sometimes you have to find a new major version and sometimes a completely new approach. For example, we had a top shelf in use, but that isn't maintained anymore. More th to the later, for now you should have all references up to date or at least compatible with .NET Standard 2.0. By the way, the upgrade assistant can also help you get rid of the reference include tags as they are also not supported anymore. More often than not, they can be replaced by AnyGet package from Microsoft. 
if you are only interested in migrating your project files without anything else there is also a tool called csproj2vs 2017 that can do the job for you at least some extent for example we had some pre and post build tasks unfortunately it didn't work out from the go to get go and i had to migrate them by hand afterwards but hey still tons of time to save independent of tools are using make a concrete plan first don't just rush into migration or you will get lost in our case we could start very easy we had some console application that had literally no references to any library if you if so you have to start with the next step i will describe afterwards it was plain simple to replace so here's example and we are were done yes the compiler might explain but issues were easy to fix if you have a console application that references libraries you have to do the next step first okay now migrate library project to dotnet standard 2.0 here we can use the power of dotnet standard 2.0 when we migrate a library to dotnet standard 2.0 we can use it in both dotnet framework 4.8 and dotnet 8 as with the console application described you can set the target framework to dotnet standard 2.0 now there can be things that will not work in our case the biggest issue was http context.current http context.current was used in library project and that the thing doesn't exist anymore in modern dotnet world which is good but for migration that goes step by step we need that thing for the time being we can make it easy transition for that the library project aka dotnet standard 2.0 was already used dependency injection so we can leverage that instead of http context.current we now inject the i http context accessor that is the default in the modern world but wait someone has to register that thing what i did is this in my asp.net web api project i created an implementation and registered it into the autofact container a consuming service now only gets the i http context accessor injected and can use it like this okay now asp.net web api migrate to asp.net core 8 this is the biggest part of the migration well at least uh, to some extent i would suggest create a new project from scratch and add the files you had before something like global.asax doesn't exist anymore and you have to migrate them manually Global.asax has some entry points like begin request, application start, and so on. Application start is now in your program.cs where you configure the application. Begin request and end request are now middlewares. Here are the examples of such middlewares. Basically, all of those events are mappable to the new .NET 8 world. Another thing you will discover is that the web API config does not exist anymore either. This is now your startup.cs or program.cs or in the newest template you have the program.cs another change we have to make while migrating to is the signal R package that they are not compatible between dotnet framework 4.8 and dotnet 8 this also had direct impact on our front end as we had to switch here as well once all projects are on either dotnet standard 2.0 or dotnet 8 it is same it is the time to migrate the dotnet standard 2.0 once to dotnet 8 as i said earlier dotnet standard 2.0 shouldn't be used anymore and dotnet 8 has a richer api so all of your libraries should be migrate to dotnet 8 but this is a very easy step just change the target framework to dotnet 8 you are done so thank you for watching this video i hope this video helps you to migrate your dotnet framework 4.8 application to dotnet 8 so don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for latest updates to joining our course you can simply go to our website called startuphack.com thank you